Hello. This is the third lecture of the three lecture series, the Pythagorean theorem. This lecture is going to be a little bit short. The focus is the proof of Jackson and Johnson. Both are high school girls. What will be discussed in this lecture? First of all, we review Loomis' incorrect claim made in 1907. Then we review our new method discussed in episode 2 of this series. The next topic would be a pure geometric proof of the Pythagorean theorem based on the original proof of Jackson and Johnson. This is followed by the original trigonometric proof of Jackson and Johnson. We first look at Loomis' incorrect claim made in more than 100 years ago. Loomis published a book called The Pythagorean Proposition. He made a claim that the Pythagorean theorem cannot be proved by trigonometry. This is because trigonometry is because the Pythagorean theorem is. However, this claim is incorrect, as discussed in the first episode of this series. This is a photograph of Elijah Scott Loomis in his late years. This is a scan of Loomis' book. The title of this section is No Trigonometric Proofs. The reason is all the fundamental formulas of trigonometry are proved based on the Pythagorean theorem. Because of this Pythagorean theorem, we have psi squared plus cosine squared equals 1. As a result, trigonometry is because the Pythagorean theorem is. In episode 1, we prove that this claim is incorrect. However, many people appeared to believe Loomis' claim without any doubt. As we mentioned in the first episode of this series, we proved that useful fundamental identities, such as angle difference and angle sum identities, are independent of the Pythagorean theorem. In other words, we derived angle difference and angle sum identities without the use of Pythagorean theorem. We are able to prove the Pythagorean identity easily without the use of the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean identity is usually referred to as the identity of psi square plus cosine square equals 1. Then we are going to show you a very interesting proof presented by Jackson and Johnson at the AMS sectional meeting. Miss Jackson and Miss Johnson present their proof at the American Mathematical Society Spring Southeastern sectional meeting held on March 18th. 2023. Jackson and Johnson's proof used trigonometry. They claim that their proof is an impossible one because Loomis said so. This is the photo taken at the AMS sectional meeting. Jackson, Miss Jackson here, Miss Johnson here. And this one shows their presentation. Because of this impossibility of proving the Pythagorean theorem with trigonometry, the media reported this widely. And this is a screenshot from 
ABC News. Before we go on, we need to review our new idea presented in episode two. Our new idea can be divided into one dimension, which is linear, and two dimension, which is area. So, given a segment x y and a point z in x y, how do we calculate the length of x y? So, let's say the length of x y be a, which is unknown. The length of z y is unknown. However, the length of x z is known. So we have a here, b the unknown part. We assume that a minus b is known. Scaling a, the length of a down to the length of a minus b, we need a scaling factor rho. For an example, suppose we know this is one fifth of a, and if we know the length of this. We multiply by five, we get this. So the proof goes as follows: This a, this is a b, which is known. Then we scale a down to b, and b, of course, would also have a known segment length. That's a minus b scaled down to here. Then these known part are added together. We have the length of a. This scaling down process is a geometric series. As a result, if x z is known, rho the scaling factor is known, then the length of x y is exactly this. You may interpret as this, because this part is rho times a. This part is of course one minus rho times a. So the scaling factor usually comes from similarity. For area, it's a little bit more complex. Suppose we have a shape A. This shape is a polygonal one, and the B is a shape inside of A. If A and B are similar, which means every edge. In B, an average edge in A satisfies this. That is, if E is an edge in A, and F is the corresponding one in B, because A and B are similar, and B is smaller, then H F in B is a scale down corresponding edge of E by a scaling factor rho. So area A can be computed in this way. Notice here it's a square, because area is a two-dimensional subject. So if we know the area of A minus B and we know the、uh, scaling factor, then the area of A is computed this way. This looks quite innocent. But indeed, it helps us to do a whole lot of work. If you are interested, please review episode two. Now, the concept of this、uh, scaling down is: we have a, we have a minus b, the yellow area, and b is the initial one, which is also a square. We use a square as an example. Now, if we know how to compute the area of the yellow part, we could scale a down to b. So we fit a into the area of b. So we have this. Now, because b is similar to a, we scale b down to b one, b one to b two, and so on. This can proceed in an indefinite number of steps. So the area is this part, this four one, and this one, this one, this one, this one, plus this one, this one, this one, this one, plus this one, this one, this one, and this one. 
keep going, the sum, the, in, the sum of this in, infinite uh, progression, we have the area of A. So this is our idea. Then let's take a look at a pure geometric proof based on Jackson and Johnson's idea. Suppose we have a right triangle with silence A less than B less than C, where C is the hypotenuse. The angle opposite to A is alpha. The angle opposite to B, side B, is beta. Of course, because A is less than B, angle alpha is less than angle beta. The case of alpha being equal to beta will be treated separately because it's really easy. Given a segment y0, z, 0 of length x, we construct a triangle x, y, 0, z, 0 in this way. First, angle y0 is alpha. Angle z, 0 is alpha plus 90 degree. Then we construct a line perpendicular to y0, z0 at z0, meeting line x, y0 at y1. Then construct a line perpendicular to y1, z0 at y1, meeting line x, z0 at z1. Because we know the sum of alpha and beta is 90 degree. So if this angle is alpha, this one has to be beta. By the same reason, this angle has to be beta. Furthermore, y0, z0 is parallel to y1 and z1. This is what we constructed. For convenience, let P be the length of y0, y1. Q be the length of z0, z1. R be the length of y1, z1. And finally, H be the length of z0 and y1. As mentioned earlier, triangle y0, y1, z0 is similar to triangle ABC. And the triangle Z0, Z1, Y1 is also similar to triangle A, B, and C. What we are interested in is computing the area of X, Y0, and Z0. To do so, applying our method discussed in episode 2, we need to compute the area of this trapezoid, y0, z0, z1, and y1. Of course, it's pretty easy to do, because the error is simply the sum of r and x multiplied by the altitude divided by 2. So we know the error here is x plus r multiplied by h divided by 2. x is given. What we need to do is finding out what h and the r. Now look at the similar triangle for triangle y0, y1, z, which is similar to a, b, c. We have h over x is equal to a over b. By the same reason, p over x is equal to c over b. As stated here, Therefore, h is x times a over b, p is equal to x times c over b. So we have h and uh, p. Then we need to find out what r is. Later on, we will use q. So let's do q and r. Because the triangle here is similar to the triangle here, we have q over h is equal to c over b. And r over h is equal to a 
over b. Therefore, we have q equals h times c over b. But we know h is here. We plug h in here, we have this. The length of q is x times a multiplied by c divided by b squared. The length of r is x times a squared divided by b squared. We copy the result of pq r h here for convenience. Now, the area of this trapezoid is x plus r times h. We know x, we know r, and we also know h. So, as you can see, we can take x out here, x out here immediately, we have this. That is, the uh, trapezoid has a area x squared divided by 2 times a times a squared plus b squared divided by b to the cube. Now, what is the scaling factor? Rho. Look at here. This triangle is similar to this triangle because y1, z1 is parallel to y0, z0. By similarity, rho is the factor going down from x to r. Therefore, rho is r over x. We know r is here. Rho is a divided by b squared. Because in the computation, after knowing rho, we need to compute 1 minus rho for length and 1 minus rho squared for area. So we compute rho here, 1 minus rho here, 1 over 1 minus rho here. This is for the linear case for length, computing the length of x, y, 0, and the length of x, z, 0. But we are interested for now the area of x, y, 0, z, 0. So for area, we need to square the scaling factor. So rho square is a over b raised to the fourth power. This is 1 minus rho square. We have this b square minus a square and factor this one into this. So 1 over 1 minus rho square is this. These are all we need. So the area of triangle x, y, 0, z, 0 is equal to 1 over 1 minus rho square times the area of this trapezoid. So this is 1 over 1 minus rho square. And this is the area. Easily see that a square plus b square are cancelled out. And uh, b raised to the cube can cancel b raised to the third power here. The only remaining it would be a b. So the area of x, y, 0, z, 0 is this. Then we need to do just a little bit more to get our results. Remember, we have a sign y0, z0 of length x. Let's construct the isocell on top of y0, z0. The angle here is beta. The angle here is beta. And this is a perpendicular. So this angle is alpha. This angle is alpha, of course. So the angle x prime here is 2 alpha. We need to find the area of this isocells. We add the area of this triangle and the area of this triangle together. We have the area of this right triangle. Why right triangle? This angle is alpha. This angle is beta. Now, we pull the newly constructed triangle here. This is the given triangle. The length here is x. Half of it is x over 2. This is beta. This is alpha. Therefore, this triangle is similar to this triangle. By the same reason, this triangle is also similar to this triangle. The area of x prime y0, z0 is x multiply by k, the length of altitude on the side y0, z0, divided by 2. 
because x is given, what we need to find this k, and later we use cheese. So let's do them together. Let x0 be the perpendicular foot from x prime to y0, z0. Now, x prime, x0, y0 is similar to this triangle. So k over x over 2 is equal to b over a. By the same reason, t over x over 2 is equal to c over a. Therefore, k is this, t is this. So the area of x prime, y0, and the z0 is, we have x, and we have k, this is k. So the area of the newly constructed iso cells is this. We add the error here and the error here together. We have this. This is the area of the right triangle x prime y zero and x, where angle y zero is ninety degree. Now we know the area of x prime y zero x is this, because this is a right triangle with angle y0 being 90 degree. So its area can also be computed as t times the length of xy0 divided by 2. So we have to compute xy0. To compute the length of xy0, again, we use similar triangle. Because this triangle is similar to this triangle, so the scaling factor Rho is, was computed as R over X, which is A over B squared, can also be applied to this linear case. That is P divided by 1 minus Rho. We know this is 1 minus Rho, and this is a P. We have the length of X, Y, 0, this. The area of X, Y, 0, X prime is 1 over 2 times T times the length of x, y, 0. t is this, and uh, the length of x, y, 0 is this. After some simplification, we have this. So, we had two ways to compute the area of the right triangle x, x prime, y, 0. These two area computation must be equal. This is what we have. We get this earlier, and we also get it in a different way. Both are equal to the area of x prime, y, 0, and x. So, x squares cancel out. These two multiply together, we get 2 square, b square minus a square is 0. So, they cancel out. So, the left-hand side is a square plus b square. The right-hand side is c square. As a result, we proved the Pythagorean theorem. Now we have to deal with the special case. When A and B are equal, so the angle alpha angle beta must be equal. The area of ABC can be computed as A times A divided by 2. Or it can also be computed as C multiplied by the length of altitude, which is half of the hypotenuse. That is c over 2. So we cancel this 1 over 2. We have 2a squared equals c squared. 2a squared is a squared plus a squared, which is equal to c squared. That is the sum of a squared, and a squared is equal to c squared. Therefore, the Pythagorean theorem for the special case holds. So we computed a pure geometric proof based on Jackson and uh, Johnson's original proof. Then we have to look at Jackson and Johnson's proof because they use trigonometric. We copy the diagram here. In Jackson and Johnson's proof, we need to calculate the sine of the angle x prime. We need the length y0 x. We need the length x prime x. So we we know x, y, 0 is this. We did it earlier. 
So we need to get x, x prime. x, x prime is equal to x prime z0 plus z0 x. x prime z0 is t. t is known here. What we need is the length of x, z0. Again, we're going to use our method to do that. For x, z, 0, we know q, which is a minus b. The unknown part, x, z, 0, is a, as we did for x, y, 0. Rho is a over b square. Therefore, x, z, 0 is 1 over 1 minus rho times the length of q. We get this. The length of x prime z0 is t equals x over 2 times c over a. So we add these two together. This is t. This is x z0. We have the length of x x prime being this. Now if you look at the angle x prime, psi x prime is equal to psi 2 alpha. Based on this right triangle, psi 2 alpha is the ratio of x, y, 0 and x, x prime. Now we know x, y, 0 here. We also know x, x prime here. After simplification, we have this. Isn't it very similar to the pure geometric proof for this angle? And we saw this earlier. Now, let's consider the triangle x prime y0 z0. Jackson and Johnson used the law of size. That is psi x prime over its the length of the opposite side is equal to psi beta over its opposite side, which is t we have here. But we know psi beta psi beta here is b over c and we also know t here after simplification we have psi 2 alpha over x equals 2 times a times b over x times c square we have it's here now x can be cancelled out so we have psi 2 alpha equals 2ab over c squared. This 2 results for sine 2 alpha, one computed here, one computed from this right triangle, must be equal. Obviously, the numerators are cancelled. We have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We also assume alpha and beta are not equal. If alpha and beta are equal, x would be at infinity. That is, x, x prime is parallel to x, y, 0. There's no problem because the special case is very easy to handle. In this way, we present you the original Jackson and Johnson's proof. What did we learn? We provided a pure geometric version of Jackson and Johnson's. The original proof of Jackson and Johnson was discussed. Consequently, their proof can be considered as a variation of the pure geometric proof based on our method. Therefore, the trigonometric component can easily be removed. This is the end of three lectures. All the slides and the long article of these three lectures are available here. Here are the references. The first episode is available on YouTube. The second one, a new approach is here. Jackson and Johnson's presentation is published as a short abstract at AMS Spring Southeastern Sectional Meeting. There, Elijah Scott Loomis books here. You may be able to find a scanned PDF file of the complete book here. This is the end of this three lecture series. Hope you will join me for the next episode on elementary geometry. Goodbye and good luck.